was actually a, a nice surprise to get, uh, we thought that was a nice ice wine, and, and I guess... My name is Paul Gardner. I'm the uh, owner and founder of Pentage Wines in Penticton, British Columbia. Um, Eric's obviously just toured around and, and seen our facility here. We uh, started in 1996 with a visit to this property and, and saw its suitability to grow grapes and, and uh, basically make a dream come true. Um, I've been interested in wine for some years before that and uh, was making, dabbling in making wine at home. So this has been basically taking that to a commercial venture. Um, it's been, a, a, what, 12 years now, I think, yeah, we've been doing this. And uh, I would think with another three years of, of hard work, we can maybe rest a little. Um, never underestimate the amount of work it, it is to, to get something like this going. We have uh, two vineyards. The, obviously, the, the first vineyard was uh, here at 4400, which we planted with seven varietals. Um, Cabernet Franc, Cab Sauve, Merlot, Syrah, Gamay, Gewürztraminer, and Sauvignon Blanc. Um, we make a blend of the five reds and do var single varietals of them, as, as uh, we are able to. Um, the second property we planted with now another 13 varieties, some overlap on, on what's here, and we have subsequently also planted here Viognier. Um, we have also Pinot Gris behind us on, on two acres. Um, I would think we're, we're more now trying to switch to a, some, some interesting Rhone blends, um, and that's a lot of what's planted over there. Uh, Marsan, Roussan, um, Mavedra, Grenache, um, Viognier, and also the other, say, spice reds for our blend, Petite Syrah, uh, Petite Verdot, Melbac. Um, we've planted some Zin over there. So we've planted Tempranillo over there. Um, so you can kind of get an idea that we like to try a lot of different wines, uh, make a lot of different wines, have the ability to, to do interesting things with them, mm -hmm. and make small lots of, of good wine, which is, I think is far more interesting than the big 10,000 liter tanks of, of single product. One of the wines that you did that really attracted our attention a few years ago was the Gamay. Yeah. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Um, Gamay is, is almost, it, it seems, the, the not sexy word grape. It, 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 uh, I think it, I was advised to grow it in, uh, in the 1996. One of the people I met and, and uh, garnered some advice from was uh, Richard Cleave who uh, obviously is one of the pioneers here and, and honestly what he doesn't know you don't need to know about growing grapes. He recommended growing Gamay. He thought it would be a great varietal for the valley. Um, we've, we, we grow it. Uh, I love the grape. It, it, it makes obviously a, a nice Gamay in, in an almost nouveau style. We make it also with one year of oak um, and actually then some stainless in a blend to get a little more complexity or a little you know, depth in the wine. We, uh, I've made it with a two-year oak program in, in the early 2000s, and, and unfortunately there are only two barrels, but it, 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 to me it was a Gamay Bordeaux. It was, it was a delicious wine, and, and we got a lot of raves for that. And then obviously it makes an excellent rosé. Mm -hmm. um, grows well here. Um, I was lucky enough that in the first year I, when I was moving the earth up there, my neighbor was looking down a, upon this, this, uh, this show going on. And it happened to be Mark Wendenberg from Sumac Ridge. And, and again, if there's another person that knows the winemaking side of things, it would be Mark. And, and he was lucky enough to mentor us in the first year. And then uh, we met other winemakers that, that were able to help us along. And uh, that's been obviously a great uh, source of, of knowledge and help. Wow, yeah. The, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about the, your cave project up there. Okay. Um, the, uh, the cave project, which seems to go on forever, it uh, probably in the year 2000, I actually dug that out and, and found out that yes, the, the fault does go right through there and, and obviously there was a, the possibility to do a, a cave and um, we've been at it ever since. It, uh, to me, it, it, it works thermally. You can walk in there today and, and what are we at, maybe 15 degrees. This winter it went down to 5 degrees and so we'll have really everything we need to, to make you know make a good product in there and and store a good product and, and the barrels will love it the humidity is is probably at least 75 80 percent mm -hmm. um, 
it's it's kind of a no-brainer. It fits on the property in that area. It doesn't. It, it obviously you can understand with this type of topography, you don't get the big flat warehouse space that you can just put up a, a building. It, it 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 optimizes the land. And, and is, is I guess would like to think green. You know what I mean? This, right. Uh, you know, case production is about 5,000? Um, it, 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 we've gone as high as 5,000 cases. I think last year we crushed 3,700. Anywhere between, you know, I'd like to say anywhere in the years to come, anywhere between 35 and 5,000 cases enables us to basically keep our focus on the wine that we're making. We'll be able to bring more and more of our own estate fruit into production and, 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 and keep really good control on, on the grapes and, and ultimately the end product of the wine. How did you find the property? How did you get here? How did you get in the wine game? Um, this was, we were, I was, I would like to say happily living in Vancouver. I, uh, I've always wanted to have, uh, I think, a piece of land and, and, and a property I can kind of walk around on. Um, and I had the interest in grapes, and so it was. Julie was encouraging me to kind of, you know, leave the house. I, I, I seem to be a bit of a repair, fixer up, or workaholic guy. <laughs> and we came up here for the weekend, and, and the doctrine was, okay, we're going to come up. We're, you know, we're going to hopefully be retiring in 10 years or 15 years, but but let's look for some land, and, and that was our focus that that weekend. We looked around at a lot of different places, and and kind of by fluke, we stumbled upon this property. Um, by staying at a bed and breakfast down the lake, the owner said, what are you looking for? We said, a piece of land. He said, this is one you should buy. And, and at that time, it was obviously a little more than we thought, we, you know, I thought we wanted, but having walked the property that weekend, it was just a no-brainer to me. It, uh, two years, two, sorry, two months later, owned it, and we started moving earth and planting vines literally the next year. We, uh, having looked around the valley in 1996 at, at the different ways to grow grapes here, I basically came to the conclusion that the, the double lyre, or, or kind of VU trellising, um, is a really economic, is a very good way to optimize the land. In in the 30, say, let's take 30 feet of, 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 of row, we're planted on a 10 by 3 spacing. Each plant comes up six, about 3 feet, goes out 1.5 feet, and then has 6 feet of cordon. It's all cordon uh, pruned. What that allows then, and if you think about it, is is in 30 feet we'll have six rows of grapes. So still keeping a seven foot tractor path for stability because you can see the kind of grades we have up here. We're able to, to I think, optimize, optimize the land and that trellising planted north-south with proper tucking and leaf removal gets some really good sunlight exposure for the varieties that you want it to. Mm -hmm. um, we grow the Syrah on almost the total opposite of that. The same plant spacing but it's called Geneva double curtain where the where the, the actual the trunk of the plant is taken up six feet brought out the one and a half feet and then along the cordon six feet um, in some cases we bilateral cordon at the top and three foot either way um, to allow us to renew canes the dirty dozen which is is was planted obviously in the last three years is totally GDC except for a little bit at the front in the Tempranillo where due to the very tight row spacing in the grade we had to make the rows narrow and it's all VSP. And it'll be interesting in that variety to see the difference between GDC and VSP. So you really made the commitment with, with your own varieties to go to yeah. the Geneva oh, yeah. Double yeah. Curtain. Yeah. Yeah. It, right. uh, it, 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 it's funny because the more I and kind of learn about growing some of these Rhone varieties and, and, and especially in obviously the Syrah and, and from the conference in Washington a couple of years ago, varieties like Mavedra are, are from what I gather aren't wanting a lot of sun on the berries.